but I'm going to mirror it. So first I press the duplicate tool, then the single select, and I just expand. People are interested because they didn't realize how powerful it is. It really is something along the lines of an ExoCAD design suite where you can do a lot of different things. You can use this uh, for everything from measuring things and finding you know, how close you are on your design versus your final restorations and measuring points, but you can also do a bunch of design things like simple digital wax ups. You can do digital extractions, which I've been using a lot for cases when I need to have a uh, Essex or a bridge made before an extraction. I can do cool stuff with that. You can do implant provisionals with this or at least create shell provisionals and that's been a real time saver for me and it's really helped the, the workflow for implants. Also, um, you can do all sorts of custom solutions, whatever it is, you know, if you need to come up with something like I just saw recently, people are making Coist appliances using this or you can use the Medit Splint app, but Essentially, the design app gives you all the tools to do a variety of these things and a whole lot more. So when you want to use Medit Design App, you start by um, going into, you know, you finish your case and you can open it up with the icon here, Medit Design, make sure you have the most up-to-date version. Any projects you have previously will be right over there and you can pick from one of those or start a new one. So here we have a case where I was doing a digital extraction. You can see all my different 3D objects along the side here. Um, with a little practice, you can see how you can either make all of them you know, translucent at the same time, control their opacity, um, or you can do one by one. You can even like make certain layers invisible. Then you have alignment mode, deviation display mode, where you can look at the deviation between different scans, curvature display mode. Now the three that I'm using the most are transformation mode, measurement mode, and then edit mode. These three give you a lot of different tools to do a variety of things that we're gonna share. Like for example, in the edit mode, you can make selections, make deletions, you can mirror different objects, you can clone parts. So really just a whole lot of different things you can do. And I'm gonna show you how I do that. So let's start with Case number one. This case, it's on my um, one of my staff members. She lost her crown. She was really concerned um, about getting uh, a big infection or something. She didn't even know she had a root canal on it, but um, I essentially took a look and I was like, okay, well, one, you need a root canal because it's been exposed. It doesn't, you know, it looks mushy under there. But also I thought, instead of doing a wax up or having something to provisionalize with, maybe I can be prepared for when she returns from endo to have a provisional. And this was one of the first times that I was really applying all the different tools that Medit Design has. So here's my initial situation, not much to provisionalize based off. And if you know about 3D printing provisionals, you know that at the moment, by the time you get to the end of your procedure, if you're gonna print it, it's gonna take some time. And I think right now, 3D printed provisionals are awesome for multiple units. For, for one unit, I much prefer to either have a shell made or to just use a standard silicone index. So I wanted to be prepared for that. Okay, so for starters, you wanna get this into the Medit Design app. So I'm gonna press this icon here and then you have the option to make a selection of whatever you wanna bring in. So I'm just bringing the mandibular scan in and first thing I do is click the edit mode. In the edit mode, I'm going to select tooth number 19 here and delete it. If you don't delete it, sometimes you have problems when you try to do steps further in the process, but sometimes now I don't have those problems either, but I think when you have um, the opportunity deleting it is usually the smoother process. Now you can take tooth number 30. The general idea here is I'm gonna use number 30 as my wax up, but I'm gonna mirror it. So first I press the duplicate tool, then the single select, and I just expanded my selection just a little bit so I have a little extra to work with. And then you're gonna press the check mark and you have a duplicate of tooth number 30. Now what you can do is, I like to rename things to stay organized. That gets more and more important as the uh, scans get, uh, as the layers get more and more. Now I use the mirror tool to create a mirror and I'm deleting the initial 
number 30, and I'm gonna call this my number 19. Now you just need to refine this a little. I mean, you don't have to refine too much, but it's actually kind of fun and it doesn't take much time. So first I'm closing the contact using the bridge tool. Both sides, I'm just kind of closing this off so I have a full shell. It's a lot easier to close holes this way. And then I press fill holes. And if it has any trouble filling holes, I'll just cut out the area. Sometimes a little cut out here, delete, and then fill hole again makes things go much smoother and it actually looks better too. So um, we do that. And now I'm gonna smoothen. So I'm using the sculpting tool, which has, you know, add, remove, smooth. And I'm using smooth. And now I'm also using the morph tool where you can drag things and extend them. I just want it to be long enough for the cutout area. Really easy to use this when you get the hang of it. I'm gonna show you some other examples. I think when you're doing this, you have to make sure you don't get frustrated because it's a learning process and I've seen how much better it gets when you get good at it with practice. Using a little bit of smoothing, sometimes I'm adding a little bit there and then I'm just smoothing it out. I think in total you'll spend about like five minutes here if you really want to improve the anatomy. But if you just want to stick with what it has, you can do it even faster. In this case, I had time. So I'm even adding in some anatomy on the occlusal. So I'm using the add tool. And um, you know, because the patient wasn't having this the same appointment, I was able to do this. And interestingly, I'm doing this on my laptop from home, which is one of the things I really love about the Medit software, Medit link, that you can use it on a Mac and that you can also easily work from home because I like doing these things from home as opposed to in the office. So that makes me more likely to spend time on it when I have the opportunity. Here I'm removing a little bit so that I can basically add some grooves and then I'm gonna use the smooth tool to make them less intense. Important to remember you can do as much or as little of this as you want, but with practice you'll get good at it and I think it's worth using every now and then. Now the problem is we have this tooth and it's not in the right place. So you use the transform tool, which was that other tool at the top or the mode. So you see I'm selected on that on the top and I'm using this to position the tooth where I want it. So you can rotate, you can even scale things. So right now I'm rotating and positioning, trying to get this aligned in the occlusal plane. And you can also scale both uniformly or in one direction. But once you have it positioned where you want, all you have to do is combine this. So you're doing a Boolean union where it's combining those two layers. Now I have my final number 19 digital design model. This model now has a tooth number 19 there and I can save that, I can export the file and I can print this and I can make a standard silicone matrix to make a provisional. So that is one way that this has really given me the opportunity to do really cool things because you know traditionally I would either send that out for a wax up or have my in-house technician do a wax up but those are time consuming things that I think are better suited for this workflow and I even have an assistant now who's been learning these things so she's able to uh, really take these on and plus she finds it really fun to do these things. I think you need to know how to do it yourself and then you can teach your assistant how to do that. Now in the case that you want to take it further you can actually um, take this into uh, Medit Temporaries. So let's say you want to print a shell with this. Now you have a design. My goal was to have a model so that I can do a standard silicone putty and make a provisional. But then I thought, why not also have a 3D printed shell? I'm not pressed for time. I can have it prepared before the appointment. So I took this. Now I have this you know, design model here and I took this and I decided to take it into um, the Meta Temporary app now. So that's this app right here and I'm gonna select the uh, option to use pre-op data, but I'm gonna tell it that this design that I had was my pre-op, okay? And I select the tooth. And then what we're gonna do is go through and um, select the area. I'm doing the shell mode to make a provisional here. So I'm kind of selecting the margin line. You can go a little bit further 
than the tooth so that your shell has room to be relined. Um, but you can also do it precisely like this and then use a tool to expand, shrink or expand right there on the bottom of the screen. So that's kind of what I did right there. I find a little more expansion than this is actually nice because it makes it easier to do the reline. So here's our provisional or temporary shell created, and I did the thin margin selection. The blue areas are about 0.5 millimeters, so you can try to add to them. So here I am adding. It's taken a little bit of anatomy away, but that's okay. I'd rather have a nice strong shell before relining. And then you can still sculpt here. So if you see opportunity, you can go ahead and sculpt. And there's a step at the end where it's going to adapt to the antagonist, where it's basically going to remove any interferences or intersections. So you can kind of add conservatively here and hope that when you select that, you don't end up losing your uh, anatomy. So now we have much less thin areas and I'm just taking a look at things. And then I'm going to do this adapt to antagonist. And now um, we can click finish and now I actually have a 3D printable shell that I can use for this situation. So in this case, I had both things ready and um, I was able to use that shell. So that's something I wanna do more of, but I think as a routine, like I'll show you other cases, in a routine situation where I'm pressed for time, I would rather just print the model in a fast print setting and do a standard provisional unless I have a multiple unit situation where I feel like it would save me time. So when I'm printing these shells, I'm using Onyx Tough with my Sprint Ray printer. Onyx Tough is a really nice material. It has a lot of ceramic filler in it and um, it only has um, one shade at the moment that is kind of on the whiter side, that's the downside, but it's really strong and people are using it for interim restoration. So I went ahead and I printed this shell ahead of time. And so what I have ready for the appointment is the model as my backup in this case and the provisional shell, which I thought I would reline. And it's important to note that my normal routine would be to use a pre-op silicone matrix but now with all these technologies when i see the opportunity we're trying to get scans ahead of time and prepare for these situations because i much prefer this rather than trying to improvise and make a provisional during the procedure saves us a lot of time makes the procedure run smoother so i plan on doing a whole lot more of these provisional shells like this so during her appointment um you know she got her root canal ahead of time she came back and um, I did, you know, I removed uh, any remaining material, did a buildup. I do uh, biomimetic dentistry. So that's the type of adhesive dentistry that doesn't rely on retention. It's adhesive retention. And so even with very limited tooth structure like this, I'm very confident in the long-term success and durability of these types of restorations. And then for the provisional, I relined that shell and when I did that, all I had to do was trim and just a little bit of stain and glaze. I've actually gotten even better at staining and glazing these now. You can put several different coats of like a shade on there to really bring the value down. It's actually quite impressive how much you can do. But for a posterior tooth, I don't think that's important. And this had really nice margins and it's a really nice polish and finish or a really nice glaze finish, I should say. <laughs> 